Hey, it's Arik from Firearms Nation, and I am back with another episode on my four-part series on the weapons of World War II. So in our first episode, we talked about the M1 Garand. I got to shoot it, it's a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna be talking about uh, another very important rifle that a lot of people know, especially if you were a US Marine. Uh, in, in the big battle of Guadalcanal, this was the rifle that the Marines used, and it was the Springfield 1903. And so I'm back here today with uh, First Sergeant, retired, uh, Bob Chenoweth. Thank you. And uh, from the US Army. And he uh, is uh, the Firearms Nation resident firearms expert. So, uh, Bob, just tell everybody again, I know you're a first sergeant, uh, but just what's your background in uh, these weapons? Well, I've been collecting uh, U.S. military World War II firearms since uh, 1979. Uh, I specialize in the M1 Garand, but I also have uh, examples of uh, other weapons in my collection, Springfield 03s, carbines, 1911s, Victory model pistols, anything that was used during that time frame, uh, I probably have it in my collection. Okay, that's, that's an impressive collection. And uh, like I said, you were a uh, first sergeant in the US Army and, and you served for how many years? 28 years. 28 years. Yes. And uh, you were deployed to Iraq? Iraq and then a short stint Kurdistan as a contractor. Excellent. All right, so uh, we're gonna let Bob take it away and uh, talk about this rifle and then I get to shoot it. Not you, but I get to. Okay. All right, all right, we're going to talk about the 1903 Springfield. As I said in the, the Garand uh, version, ch capital, chapter, whatever you want to call it, uh, the rifle was designed in 1936 and began uh, introduction into service. However, there weren't enough to go around. So the Army and especially the Marines were still using the 1903 Springfield, which was the firearm that originally was used in World War I and through the interwar years. It's a standard bolt action, five shot, Mauser type action. You have to work the bolt after each round, a limited magazine capacity of five rounds, but it was a very accurate, very effective weapon. And the Marine Corps always prided themselves on being a, a service of marksmen, every Marine a rifleman. And this was a rifleman's rifle. Now, as I said, they started their battles, their initial battles in World War II in Guadalcanal with the 03 Springfield. Now, as that the uh, Guadalcanal campaign evolved, and as the Army came in to relieve them towards the end, the Marines became very enamored of the M1 because they realized the advantage of the semi-automatic weapon and the three additional rounds in the magazine. So they were quick to change their mind about having this rifleman's rifle and going to the semi-automatic Garand so that they could have a higher rate of fire in their squad. This rifle, like the Garand, can also have a bayonet attached on the end simply slides over the bayonet stud and the ring goes over the barrel. And now you've got the ability to give the enemy steel. The M1, uh, the M1 bayonet that fits on this rifle will also fit on the M1 Garand. So there was no problem with having to have the correct bayonet for the proper rifle. They were completely interchangeable. Take it off, you press the button, pull it off, put it back in the scabbard. This particular Springfield is unique in that this is what's called a Mark I. This was a secret weapon that was designed at the end of World War I to break out of the trench war stalemate. The idea was they had a small device, like a subcaliber device, where the soldier would take the bolt out, they would slide this subcaliber device in, which was like a, a little miniature weapon in itself, and it had a magazine that went in the top. It fired a 32 caliber round, and they cut an ejection port on this side of the receiver. So the object of the exercise was every soldier had one of these with 32 rounds of 32 caliber ammo. They would get out of the trenches and they would walk across no man's land and fire into the enemy trenches and gain fire superiority. Now, the idea never really came to fruition because the war ended before they could put those uh, devices into service. And actually at the end of the war in the 1920s, the army declared them obsolete and ordered that all the Peterson devices be destroyed. So now they are extremely rare, and if you find one, they generally go for many thousands of dollars because there's probably only a handful left out of the total amount made. The rifles, the Mark Ones with the holes cut in them, they stayed in service because they're a 1903 Springfield. You can put a 30 caliber round in it and fire it, and it didn't matter whether it had that hole in the side or not, 
it was a rifle. All right, so that was that was great information, Bob. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any of that sub subsonic round, subcaliber, subcaliber device. Yeah. All right, uh, with us, but uh, we do have some ammunition for the 1903, and uh, I'm going to uh, do my very best, Marine, and uh, charge that hill, and see if I can produce the same type of quality shooting that our U.S. Marines can do. I have no doubt you will, Art. <laughs> Ah! All right, so for sergeant. Yes. I got a bolt action gun here. All right. I open it up. I got the stripper kit. I'm gonna Shove them all the way down. push all the way in. There you go, get rid of that clip, throw it away. You're ready to go. I'm ready to go. Is Locked there a safety on it? Ready to rock. Ready to rock. It's gonna nudge you a bit. Woo! Work your bolt. Oh! I got that on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. This is WW1. All right. Don't judge me. The Huns are coming. Ah. Don't judge me. Woo. That was better. All right. And it locks open to let you know you're empty. Okay. All right. That's good. You, uh, <laughs> Well, okay, I never claimed I was a Marine <laughs> or uh, a sniper. Uh, well, in all fairness, Ark, you've shot semi-auto weapons your entire life. In, in all fairness. Yeah. So, all right, let's go wrap this one up. Well, that was a lot of fun shooting a, a, a bolt action gun. Bolt I, action couldn't three. Yeah. I, I couldn't imagine shooting a uh, <laughs> bolt action in combat. Uh, you got to get pretty good at running it. I'm sure uh, I have plenty of viewers who are Marines who can do that very well. Um, so uh, maybe one of these days uh, I'll get some of that kind of uh, education. But anyways, uh, very interesting and I understand why they went to uh, higher capacity firearm. Eventually as we move on in this, uh, you're going to get to the uh, semi-automatic right. and then fully automatic. Uh, but uh, thank you for uh, watching uh, the second part of the weapons of World War II. I guess that's what I'm calling it, the weapons or the firearms of World War II. Sounds good. Uh, next week, uh, or next week, next time, hopefully this will be in a week. We'll see how I'm doing on the editing. But uh, next time, uh, join us, and uh, we'll be back with uh, an iconic, another iconic The M1 carbine? Yes, give it away. Give oh, it away. I'm It'll sorry. The M1 carbine. We'll see you then.